Okay. Uh, test. Okay. Uh, okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, so my name is Hui Jie. So I'm a software engineer at uh, GovTech. So today I'll be talking about um, a topic surrounding uh, Open API and utilizing Go working around with uh, Open API. So about data integration. So building systems for uh, Swift cli client servicing in Go. Yeah. So yeah, this is the daily uh, things that I use at, at uh, my day-to-day -day work at uh, GovTech. Yeah, so used to come from uh, Node.js uh, background as well, front-end development background as well. Uh, and the past stuff that I worked on, uh, I think you might see some uh, very, very uh, old tech there, uh, RIP Flash. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, to give some context, so um, what uh, 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 motivated me to talk about uh, to for this talk? It's about a project that I'm currently working on, which is the uh, one client view, one CV project. So uh, basically, it's actually um, a live application right now. It's a web application powered by a set of uh, Go microservices that interfaces with uh, uh, various data sources provided by various uh, Singapore government ministries and agencies. So it's a data aggregation tool that allows frontline officers to do uh, if, uh, efficient and uh, easy uh, background screening of uh, clients. Uh, when I say clients here, it's actually, actually like um, residents or citizens who come to the frontline officers seeking uh, financial aid or social aid. So uh, imagine the situation before 1CV came into the picture. It's, like, it's very manual. It's very, very manual process. So frontline officers have to like, you know, either call or email the various ministries or agencies to get a client's information. So that's where one, one CV came into the picture. So imagine like, uh, so the whole backend mostly is built in, uh, in, in Go. So once a frontline officer sends a request to our backend to retrieve the client's information, um, it will then trigger a set of uh, microservices in the, back, in the backend to go and retrieve the data from the various uh, ministries or data sources. On the other hand, uh, we also starting to expose our data, that we, the, 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 the client data, through uh, API as well, to uh, various other uh, agencies or API clients. So if you look at it, like one CV has a, it's a kind of like a, has two sides. So, oh, actually there's a typo there, sorry. <laughs> The, the green part is a typo, okay. But, so on the green part is the API consumer, and then there's the orange part. On the right-hand side is actually the, the API, pro, the, oh, oh, sorry. The green part is the API provider, the orange part is the API consumer. Yep, so uh, as you can see, like, no, uh, kind of business is good. So <laughs> we have a group problem here is that there's a search in demand for uh, data. So uh, we now need to find, a, find ways to fulfill demand for customized data and also be able to interface quickly with uh, new data sources and be also be able to validate our, uh, uh, the responses that we receive from data sources. So then comes the question and the idea is that, that is there an easy way to you know, service requests uh, for data from 1CV? Is it possible to customize this data? Is it uh, possible to interf uh, interface with new data sources in the least taxing manner? Uh, is there a standardized way of um, documenting and validating the API, this, uh, AP, the API specific specific yeah, specifications? So, yep, so then comes the solution, which uh, API Hub with an API, a open API-centric approach. So, uh, so it's definitely possible to uh, uh, address those issues that I mentioned before. So by standardizing documentations of uh, APIs from data sources, uh, standardizing the, the, the documentation of APIs shared with the clients, and then also standardizing the creation of uh, the, back, the, the backend code base uh, using uh, code generation based on the specifications from the OP, uh, open API uh, uh, spec files. 
So, and the question is why open API? So, it's kind of de facto standard for documenting and sharing API specifications. And it's also kind of wide, widely uh, supported by the industry. And right now, in terms of in within the Go uh, ecosystem, there's uh, several libraries available to perform API validation, boilerplate code generation, mock data generation, which I will touch on later. Hmm. So, uh, continuing from the diagram that I showed previously, so the orange the, the orange part re represents the API consumers, and the green part represents uh, the API uh, providers. So let's touch on the API consumer part first. Okay. So, so just now in the, I mentioned earlier in the idea is, is it possible to use open API to standardize the, the generation of code? So yes, you can. So, in the, so the solution that we are working on right now is to use open API specs to generate the API client handlers and also the types. And on top of that, uh, we can also use that to generate mock data uh, or API servers, uh, API servers that are serving mock data so that we can use that to test, uh, emulate, uh, simulate uh, data, varying data so that we are able to test the, the API specs thoroughly. So for this presentation, I'll be touching on this surrounding these two uh, libraries. Uh, one is uh, lit open API, uh, which actually a uh, open API parser validation uh, library, uh, and it's also capable of generating mock data based on the open a API schema. And then uh, O API uh, uh, code gen. So this is actually a client and a server code uh, generation library. So it actually reduces the amount of tedious work needed to write codes that conforms to the open API specification. And it's capable of generating a uh, code that are compatible with several you know, popular HTTP routing engines like uh, Echo, Jin, or Gorilla, even Fiber. Okay, so a quick demo. So I'm just gonna do a quick demo of actually how the uh, OAPI code gen works. So before I execute command, just show how my project is uh, structured. So actually, uh, so also to add on later at the last part of this, the, the presentation, I will share a QR code to this uh, repository so everybody can later and go in and check out that uh, repository. Okay, so I have a demo folder here, which basically stores this, um, you know, a sample, a sample uh, open API file. And so it's the uh, I think quite good. most probably most people are familiar with the test store uh, example. So I'm just going to execute a command to generate the, uh, the code. Okay, so actually it's very, very instantaneous when it generates the code. So for OAPI code gen, you can pass in parameters to, see, to, to instruct it to say, I want client code only, or I want server code only. Or you can say just both. So by default, it will just generate for both. So if you scroll down, so even create the, the, the types for you, so it's actually very convenient, very useful. So a lot of the kind of bootstrapping codes is already generated for you. So the front part here is all basically the, the client uh, client stuff. So actually, everybody can go and check out the, the repository to to see it in action. Yeah. And also the accompanying uh, server the server code as well. So 
the advantage of using this library is so that in the end, you are able to generate client, API client code and server code that follows one single open API spec file. Okay, back to my presentation. Okay. So then, okay, it comes the uh, mock API, the mock data generation portion. The portion. So, um, okay. By default, out of the box, uh, these two libraries, they uh, lib open API can generate the mock the mock data, but there's no way you can, uh, there's no out of the box solution to serve this out through an API server. And on the other hand, all API code gen creates can help you create the server code as well. So, uh, the, so what I did here is basically merging uh, these two, using, utilizing these two libraries together and bringing them together using some uh, glue code. To, so using uh, lib open API to generate the mock, mock data and then serve it out through the server code generated by OAPI code gen. And how it's done is actually through a modification of uh, the, the templates provided by uh, OAPI code gen. So OAPI code gen, the library actually sup allows you or supports a customization of their templates. So you can customize it to, your, to suit your various um, uh, use cases. Yep, and just remember if you add, add any custom code, that's used in the templates, you must remember to import them as well in the template as well. Okay, so then for next demo, I'm going to touch on the uh, mock API server. So I kind of like actually for to save time, I kind of dockerize the, the solutions so I can just demo them. Give me a moment. So I already have a, so it, for, this de for this presentation, I'm demoing two uh, mock APIs. So uh, I, I won't be using any actual uh, APIs uh, over here because I will get into trouble. <laughs> so, but as you can see, the, to simulate uh, certain scenarios, like for example, on housing and probably on uh, fetching on savings data about, uh, about a citizen. So underlying what this um, Dockerize uh, container, container do is actually is uh, running the uh, solution that I mentioned previously, the lib open API plus the O API code gen solution plus the glue code. So it loads the open API spec file and then serve out the endpoint plus the accompanying mock data, which you can, be, you can see it over here. And another advantage of this, uh, which I will demo it now, I'm going to do some changes. I think hopefully time permits. I'm going to do some changes, and then rerun that, uh, rerun the server, server again. You should be able to see the the new changes being reflected. So for example, I got this new information about, uh, or maybe there's an update to the, to the spec file. Maybe a new version is included. Just simulating that, okay, so probably a new version is introduced. Oops, okay. So probably a new endpoint called account balance is added. Okay, so I'm just gonna rerun this fellow. Okay, so as you can see, it detected that the file change, 
so it regenerated so in inside the container actually regenerated the the necessary backend code and also loaded the new file okay I still have my yep and that's the new account balance uh, endpoint Okay, then back to the presentation. Hmm. So to touch on, so lib open API can generate mock data in various ways. So it can try to guess for you. So it'll basically ge generate mock data based using the type, format, and the pattern of the property. Or if you have specific use cases that you want to test, you can also insert in uh, another uh, through the external value uh, attribute and ins load some uh, mock data from an external file. Okay, so I kind of ca ca cover on the mock data part. Okay, so now I'm going to touch on interfacing with uh, the data source APIs using a generated code. Just make me make sure that everything's running. Mm. So, okay, so this piece of code that I run basically uh, interfaces with the two endpoints that I've, uh, sh uh, the two mock data endpoints, uh, mock data services that I'm running, and it's able to also pull the data and then output them. So the details of the code, you can find it in the code gen multi-client uh, folder. Okay. Okay, then on to the validating of uh, HTTP requests and responses. So oh, sorry, I went too far back. Eight minutes, eight minutes. So I think there's a bit kind of um, kind of like uh, not much information here, but under the hood, what it's doing is actually um, using uh, lib open APIs uh, libraries. It, pro as it provided a companion uh, package called the lib open API validate validator. So you can also use that to validate any generated HTTP the HTTP request object and also validate the HTTP response received from the server. So I can make sure that whether the re response received conforms with the open API spec. Oops. Ooh, sorry. Haha. 
toolbox is quite useful for Photoshop. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> okay. So I okay, I think okay. Touching on the API provider part. So on customizing uh, APIs for clients, so is is it possible? Yes. So you can also uh one thing that's discovered is actually that you can also um import uh multiple open API files into a single open API file. So via the, the ref the, the the ref attribute. So what I've done here is actually uh combining the specs the specs of two files into a into a single file and then use that to generate the the respective code. Uh, oh, sorry, back this again. Uh. Just make sure that it's not running yet. Okay, so I'm going to run two applications. So, first application is actually a API server that Imagine that it's serving the two, com two, two APIs combined. Okay, yes, I will get it later, yes. Okay, so this is a combined data, uh, basically um, mock data generated from the combined data that I showed earlier in the, the previous uh, open API spec file. So are we able to also retrieve it from another API client? So yes, so and then output that through uh, a version API endpoint which I showed in here. So yes. So let me just start. Um, There you go. So imagine the use cases of this is that with this kind of mix and ma matching, actually I'm not sh not be able to show uh, the full extent of what you can do in the uh, with like, say for example API customizing with Open API spec files. But there are definitely there are other uh, attributes that you can use to, for example, say exclude fields, include fields, or even Playing around with the inheritance. So, let me go back to this file. Yep. And imagine that you can even say uh, mix and match API, uh, APIs here, the data sources here, and even uh, version them so that you can, there's a possibility, it's a, it's a possibility here that you can even uh, serve up different version APIs for different clients needs. Okay, okay. Okay. Okay, so to sum up the presentation, okay, three minutes, okay. So time save to write a client and server boilerplate quotes and then you give the dev team more time to focus on uh, writing the custom and business logic. And uh, you can also, so actually there's also different workflows to this. There are some developers who prefer to say, write the endpoint handlers first, controller first, then generate the API docs. Uh, that is okay as well, that works fine as well. So basically it's choose the, the, the method that best suits your project's needs. And also, okay, some things to note is also just additional note is that you know when dealing with the ref attribute, so different libraries have different way of resolving the 
file imports via the ref attribute. So if all fails, uh, you can also try to shift the spec files, or there are other ways of importing spec files, like for example, using absolute path or from remote server. Okay. Right. Okay, so to access the report, repo, can okay, scan this QR code. And I think that should be it. I have one minute. Oh, five minutes. Five minutes left. Okay. Any questions? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> we do have a few questions. So there's one question about generated open API code safe to be customized, such as adding own validation logic. Okay, so uh, two ways of approaching this. So one way is you can fork the uh, open API, uh, the old API code gen uh, pack, uh, whole repository, and then customize the templates in there. Or you can also just need to copy the entire uh, template folder. That's it. And then just uh, customize the template in your own folder. Yeah, because oh, I forgot to add that uh, all API code gen uh, requires it to be installed as a separate, uh, uh, pro uh, se a separate uh, app within your machine that's doing the code generation. Yeah. Uh, so I think that cover. Yeah, so one way is fork. Or the other way is you just copy out the, 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 the templates and uh, customize from there. Or another way is that you can also just keep the code inside your own folders and then import them in your template. Okay. Okay, uh, let's see. okay, thoughts on API first versus code first. Uh, okay, for depends on your project. For for my project, I prefer uh, API first, documentation first, because of the multitude of uh, data sources that we have to uh, interface with. Yeah, so uh, both ways to me, both ways works and depends on your project needs. Wouldn't it be easier to ask respective teams to generate open API compliant elements? Uh, okay, I have a. I will counter this because even if you ask the teams to generate that file themselves, uh, you how would you ensure the standardization of the file? Yeah, and also the code that is that is written. To that is follow, that's going to be uh, compliant with the open API spec. Okay, I think. Oh, is that all the questions? Okay, I think that's all the questions. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone.